I would like to thank T Restyling for sending me this item today for review. It comes in a compact box. It's plain, but no big deal. It gets recycled anyway. The label says M3 18 19 inch caliper cover, and this is for the 18 and 19 inch wheels. Color is red. Opening up the flap reveals what's inside. There are two plastic bags. The first bag contains two sets of decals and decorative trim. The first set is white and you get a couple of extra. The second set is black and you also get a couple of extra pieces. The metal diamond shaped pieces are decorative trim that gets installed on each of the covers. I'm not sure why they don't come installed from the factory. The second bag has all of the hardware for the installation. On the bag it shows which pieces go with which caliper on the car. Inside that is a bag of bolts. There are large, medium, and small bolts here. They are stainless steel for best longevity in tough environments where these will be located. The other bag contains the locking accessories that the bolts connect to the cover with. Each is labeled, L for the left side, R for the right side, and the numbers go with the specific cover, and that's what the label on the bag refers to. Next we have the covers, and they are all wrapped in fabric bags for protection during shipping. They're nicely labeled in case you forget what you purchased. Inside the bag is the cover enclosed in bubble wrap. Slipping it out, we see a nice shiny cover in red. The caliper covers are for the Model 3, and they're made of an aluminum alloy material and are painted with a high temperature baking paint process. Long term, they will not fade or paint peel, and resistant to high temperature and low temperature. This one happens to be for the front brakes. Notice the embossed TSL F for front on the inside. Note the blue plastic on the top center of the cover. That's where the metal diamond trim piece gets placed. Looking at the covers, the paint looks really nice. And besides red, you can also get these in yellow, green, pink, orange, and blue. In the next bag, we have an example of the rear cover. It is smaller, with a slightly different attachment method than the front covers, and I'll explain that later. These brake caliper covers are specifically designed for the Tesla Model 3 2017 through 2023 with 18 or 19 inch wheels. They also have kits for the Model Y too, which have a different design due to the Model Y brake caliper differences. These brake caliper covers are tested for durability and will not loosen after long-term driving, which makes them safe and reliable. Here you can see the difference in size. I will now remove all the hardware from the bags and place it out to show you them in detail. On the top row, L1, L2, and L3 are the left front, R1, R2, and R3 are the right front. On the second row, L4 and L5 are the left rear, R4 and R5 are the right rear. In the center are five trim pieces with one spare. These four large bolts are M6 by 45 and they're used with L2, L3, R2, and R3. The medium bolts are M6 by 30 and are used with L1 and R1. And these four small bolts are M6 by 18 and are used with L4, L5, R4, and R5. On the bottom row are the included tools. This is an M5 hex key or Allen wrench to tighten the bolts. And finally, this is an M5 counterbore cylinder that allows you to place the L1 and R1 for correct positioning. Next up is the Tesla name decals. This kit includes plenty of Tesla decals in white and black. Choose the color you prefer. Here are both to show you what they look like. I picked black since I think it may be easier to keep clean compared to white. Take the decal and center it on the large flat area of the cover. I placed a piece of painter's tape to keep it lined up. Then fold it over and remove the backing plastic. 
Place it on the cover and press it smooth with your hand or cloth. Make sure to press down firmly all around the letters to make sure they adhere to the cover well. Once this is done, peel the edge of the top plastic away. Do so at a 45 degree angle so that the decal stays in place. Once removed, it's done. For the rear cover, the process is the same. If you're truly daring, you could do this without the tape and just place it by eye. On the other extreme, those with OCD can use a ruler and center it accurately. If at some point you want to change these decals, just remove them by peeling them off and place the other decal on instead. On top of each cover is a double-sided tape with a piece of blue plastic on top. Remove this plastic and take one of the metal diamonds and make sure the top of it has the side with the plastic protection. Then place it on the double-sided tape and press firmly down. I used a cloth to assist. Now remove the protective plastic from the surface and that's it. Then do the same thing for the rear covers. For installation, let's go to the car and get it ready. See my tire rotation video in the upper right of the screen for all the tools and detail for removing the wheels. Remove the wheel cover if you have one on the wheel. Slightly loosen the wheel bolt nuts with a breaker bar and a 21 millimeter driver. Do this for the rear wheel too. Place wheel chocks on the opposite side of the car so it doesn't move. Use a low profile floor jack to lift the car. And place jack stands under the jack points for safety. I'll place them both on the front and rear. With the car lifted, remove the wheel bolt nuts and take the wheels off. Now I have clear access to the brakes. These are the left rear and left front covers. I'm going to install the left front first. The black port is on the left and the exposed screw is on the right. Here is how the L1 block gets installed. It goes in the center and then using the counter bore cylinder to make sure that the cover is centered over the L1 hole. I found pre-installing the L2 and L3 accessory blocks with the long bolts makes things a little easier. Put the L3 on the left side and the L2 on the right side as shown here. Loosely thread the bolt so that it can move easily. Place the L1 block with the smaller side towards the caliper and the label facing the inside. Keep a finger on the L1 while fitting the front cover, starting on the right side of the caliper and moving towards the left side. Reach around and adjust the L2 and L3 blocks so they fit into the openings on the brake caliper. Use the center bore cylinder and stick it into the center hole. It should go all the way through the L1 block. If it doesn't, adjust the cover until it does. Even without tightening the bolts, the cover should be well seated and not move. Remove the center bore cylinder and insert the medium length bolt into the opening. Hand thread and tighten most of the way in. Use the Allen wrench if necessary. Here's a close up of the top of the caliper where the L2 block goes. Notice that there's a semi-circle shaped cavity where it fits into. This is the most crucial part of the installation. Make sure the block is perpendicular to the rotor surface. It should be at least a quarter inch or six millimeters from the surface. Use the Allen wrench to tighten the bolt. Keep checking to make sure the block is staying away from the rotor surface. Keep doing this until it's most of the way in. Now go to the bottom of the caliper. It has the same semicircle shaped cavity here too. 
Do the same with the L3 block. Check both the L2 and L3 blocks for clearance of the router. If all looks good, tighten the bolt as firm as you can go with the Allen wrench and do the same for the top bolt. Now use the Allen wrench on the L1 block in the center and tighten the bolt all the way. Take the cover with your hand and feel it. There should be no movement and it should be rock solid. Now for a close-up of the installed cover. If you ever need to service your brakes, this can easily be removed with the Allen wrench and quickly reinstalled. Roll the wheel over and put it back on. Carefully lift it up and watch out for the caliper cover. Line up the bolts and slide it on. Then. Take the nuts and hand thread them on the bolts one at a time in a star pattern. One done hand tightening, use the breaker bar to tighten. It doesn't have to be perfect since I will do the final torque on the ground. Give the wheel a good spin. There should be plenty of space between the caliper cover and the wheel spokes. Now for the left rear wheel. As before, remove the cover if one is on. Loosen the bolt nuts and then raise the car. Once above the ground, remove the nuts and take off the wheel. As with the front cover, I felt it's easier to pre-install the L4 and L5 blocks with the bolt. Sorry I forgot to record this on the left rear, so those R5 and R4 are really L5 and L4. Insert the short bolts into both of the openings. Place the L5 on the left side and L4 on the right side as shown here. Do it loosely so they can be adjusted on the caliper. Note there is no center block like on the front cover, which makes it easier to install. Place the cover straight over the rear caliper. You may need to adjust the L4 and L5 blocks while doing this. Starting at the top, adjust the L4 block so that it is seated correctly, and then tighten with the Allen wrench, turning the small size bolt. As with the front, make sure the block is staying perpendicular to the surface of the rotor. Adjust the cover if necessary. Tighten the bolt most of the way. Now do the same for the bottom. Make sure the L5 block is seated correctly and tighten the small bolt most of the way. Do a final turn on the bolt for the top and then the bottom. It should be securely attached as you feel the cover. Now for a close up of the installed left rear cover. Note that it looks much better and bigger than the original calipers. The rear ones look a bit on the small side. Take the wheel and put it back on. Carefully lift it up and watch for the caliper cover. Line up the bolts and slide it on. Hand thread the nuts onto the bolts one at a time in a star pattern. When done hand tightening, use the breaker bar to tighten. Now that both caliper covers are installed on the left side and the wheels put back on, I can remove the jack stands and lower the car. Using a torque wrench set to 129 foot-pounds, do the final tightening when the car is lowered. Then remove the floor jack and move it to the right side of the car and swap the wheel chocks.
On the right side of the car, repeat the steps of lifting the car and removing the wheels. Here are the covers for the right side. Notice that they are a mirror image of the left side versions. The black cap on the right and the screw thread on the left sides now. For the front cover, the R1 block gets inserted on the top and attaches with the medium bolt. I'll pre-install the R3 and R2 blocks with the long bolts. R3 on the left and R2 on the right as shown here. Place the R1 block into the opening on the center of the caliper with the label facing out. While holding R1, place the cover over the caliper, adjusting the R2 and R3 blocks as needed. Insert the center bore cylinder to make sure the cover is aligned with the hole in R1. Then exchange it with the medium size bolt. Go about most of the way using the Allen wrench. Now make sure the R3 on the top and R2 on the bottom are in their correct position aligned with the brake rotor. Use the Allen wrench to tighten both of them down. Do a final turn for all three bolts and make sure the cover is on securely. Here is a view of the right front cover installed and a close up of R2 on the lower part and R3 on the upper part of the cover. As before with the other rear cover, insert the short bolts into the holes on the left and right sides of the cover and attach to the R5 on the left and R4 on the right as shown here. Place the cover straight over the rear caliper. You may need to adjust the R4 and R5 blocks while doing this. Starting at the top, adjust the R5 block so that it is seated correctly and then tighten with the Allen wrench turning the small size bolt. As with the front, make sure the block is staying perpendicular to the surface of the rotor, adjust the cover if necessary. Now for the bottom, make sure the R4 block is seated correctly and tighten the bolt most of the way. Look at both the R4 and R5 to make sure that they have clearance from the brake rotor. Do a final turn on the bolt on the top and then the bottom. It should be securely attached as you feel the cover. Now for the close-up of the installed right rear cover. Note the R4 and R5 have good clearance from the brake rotor. Now that both caliper covers are installed on the right side and the wheels put back on, I can remove the jack stands and lower the car. Using a torque wrench set to 129 foot-pounds, do the final tightening when the car is lowered. Remove the floor jack and the wheel chocks. For the best view of the new caliper covers, I think the base 18-inch wheels without the Tesla Aero covers really looks good. You can also put on aftermarket wheel covers like those from Rymetrix or EVBase that may block a little of the view of this new look. It's up to you. For the first time driving with them installed, I checked for any noise in the wheel area, and all is good. Here is a view of the finished caliper covers in daylight outside the garage. Moving around from front to back and left to right to give you a good view. Overall, I think this is a high quality kit. The covers are solid aluminum alloy and have a great painted finish. The installation is not bad at all and completely reversible if you need brake service. I feel this is much easier than painting the brakes, which can be quite messy and expensive if done by a professional. I think the covers give the car a nice pop of color. A friend of mine at work immediately noticed the difference when I parked at the office garage and complimented on the look. If you are interested in the T-Restyling Caliper covers, see the link in the video description. Use code RANGER for 15% off your purchase. They're available in red, yellow, green, pink, orange, and blue. If you have any questions or comments, 
please leave one down below. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.